I'm based on Curtin University and I'm uh, basically software engineer, a member of uh, the Desert Fireball Network team. This is the logo of our group. Uh, well, the goal of our project is uh, to search uh, for meteorites in this area, like desert, Nalabor, and Austrian Outback. And we build this network uh, of cameras to photograph the, uh, the night sky and uh, process the images from these cameras and then actually find the rock photographed by the network. Uh, I will start with a little bit of theory. Uh, it's a bit uh, different topic than the, the radio astronomy. Uh, we are talking about uh, meteoroid, uh, which is uh, which is uh, uh, kind of rock, uh, chunk of asteroid or whatever that is flying in the solar system. Uh, then we it gets to a stage of meteor. That's what you see on the. Uh, on this image, that's the, the luminous part of the, of the flight. Uh, it has also some other names. Shooting star is, is a typical name for, for the faint, uh, fast uh, meteors. Fireball is a large one, and bullet is, is a very large one that can be visible even during the daytime. Uh, the principle of, of uh, finding out where the, where the observed uh, uh, event uh, uh, landed or what, what was the trajectory of, of, the, of the meteor uh, is uh, observation from two or more uh, geographically distinct locations. Uh, we triangulate, uh, the, 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 we perform triangulation calculation based on these images. Uh, we analyze it, uh, put in the weather model to, uh, uh, to find out what, what was the behavior of, of the uh, rock uh, in the dark flight. Because after this, this uh, uh, luminous uh, uh, flight uh, is uh, between the height of about 120 kilometers to 30, 40 kilometers based on, on the size uh, uh, and angle of entry to the atmosphere. And uh, uh, then from those uh, 30, 40 kilometers, uh, the, uh, if there is some terminal mass left, uh, the rock basically free falls and it's dragged by the stratospheric and atmospheric winds. Uh, so we have to run uh, the weather model uh, on, on a computer and uh, this influence is quite significant. It can move the rock uh, up to 10 kilometers and it's not in one way, it can go in, in the space like this way and back and, and it's actually quite a significant thing. And when we, uh, if we uh, think that it's a, it's a good case of a, of a possible fall, we organize a search trip and collect the meteorite. So we have here three similar terms, meteorite, that, uh, me meteoroid, that's the, the rock in the space, uh, meteor, that's the, that's the quick uh, event in the atmosphere, and meteorite, that's the rock which we found on the, on the ground. Uh, and why we are doing all this? It's uh, because we are trying to, to collect some extraterrestrial rocks uh, as a samples uh, from the uh, uh, solar system. These rocks are uh, quite old and uh, there, there is several types of meteorites. Uh, basically it's stone, stony meteorites. Uh, this, this is the, the, the oldest ones, which is the original uh, formed rock the, from the nebula, which was here before the sun and, and planets were formed. And uh, then there is uh, uh, three subtypes of uh, 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 melted and metamorphed uh, met, uh, or, or rocks uh, which undergone metamorphosis. Uh, Achondrite is a stony melted uh, meteor. Uh, stony irons are mixed stony. And, and, and iron, and, and pure ironies are uh, basically from the core of, of the larger uh, bodies in the solar system, like uh, 
some old planets possibly broken down and larger asteroids. And this is a, a slice of, of uh, one uh, uh, meteorite, meteorite, uh, meteorite, meteorite uh, of, of the uh, uh, of the oldest type, and these uh, roundy shapes that's that's called uh, condyles that gives it a name chondrite, and th these uh, pieces of rock are basically almost as old as the sun, so, so pretty the oldest uh, thing you can hold actually in your hand. So before, before uh, there were some ideas about building a, a desert fireball network, there is quite a long history of, of, uh, of this uh, way of observing uh, the sky and uh, finding uh, meteors and meteorites. Uh, it all started in, in late uh, 50s in the Czech Republic uh, with, with uh, uh, can you hear me, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. It just feels different when I was standing by. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so at the beginning there were manually operated uh, film cameras then in late 90s, uh, late 90s uh, 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 we started to develop uh, uh, automated film cameras and uh, nowadays uh, about uh, some three, four years ago uh, started the development and deployment of digital cameras that uh, will slowly replace those film cameras. Uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, manual operated cameras were run uh, actually for probably more than 40 years in, in the Central European Fireball Network and uh, using uh, not this, this is the latest uh, type of or model of, of uh, manual, manual camera uh, with uh, some processors, I don't have any images unfortunately, uh, uh, was captured first uh, uh, meteor simultaneously observed by two stations and it was quite happily triangulated and eventually uh, found the meteorite and it was the first case of this kind uh, ever uh, until about some I would say uh, year 2000 there was uh, just about five six cases of, of such an uh, su su such an event and a rock collection and then uh, during class 10 years there are about 10 more so so far there is only about 15 of, of uh, meteorites with, with known orbit so it's observation of, of the meteor. Uh, this, these uh, manual cameras were run in time uh, in times when the, the human work was not that expensive as today and the operator had to replace the film manually. Here is the tray. He had to remove the cover and this is like a, a box to, to protect the camera from the rain and, and it, it, it was basically run uh, mostly at the meteorological stations where uh, uh, observers had to uh, report every hour the state of the weather so they were doing this on top of their normal work. So uh, then the next generation was automated film cameras. Uh, about in 1997 there were first ideas to design this uh, sort of device uh, at the, the uh, Czech Astronomical Institute in Ondřejov. Uh, in 1999 started the, the, the uh, design and development based on their specification. That's about the time when I joined this uh, type of project uh, as a software developer. So I have uh, through the years coded the, the uh, control software of, of these uh, film cameras and it's actually running up to now. Uh, in 2001 we uh, finished the first prototype and uh, since uh, 2009 uh, 
Uh, there is 15 cameras built in Europe and uh, uh, it's 13 stations, two spare cameras because there is a lot of mechanical parts and from time to time something breaks so they need servicing. But uh, even that uh, from 2001 after some modifications is still running uh, pretty strong. Uh, at about uh, in year in 2002, um, uh, a chap named uh, Phil Bland uh, has learned about this uh, uh, automated uh, film cameras, and he at that time and, and before he was coming to to Western Australia to uh, walk in Nalabor and search for meteorites, just random meteorites that are there. Uh, able to spot and, and find uh, and uh, uh, he wanted actually to to install similar sort of camera in Nalabor because there is much better conditions for uh, both observation uh, there is a much higher percentage of clear sky and uh, also uh, uh, the, the ground is much more suitable for searching rather than forests and lakes and, and hills in, and mountains in Europe. So in 2003 we uh, built and installed first prototype of modified uh, uh, film camera uh, in, at Hampton Hill uh, which is about 30 k's east of Kalgoorlie and in, it, it worked pretty well so a year later uh, uh, Phil Bland ordered uh, three more cameras, so eventually we had uh, uh, three stations uh, in 2005 and four in uh, 2007. And all these cameras are still sitting in Nalabor and, and working. Uh, actually, we, we switched to the uh, mode of operation, then we have three running and one spare in Perth. And this is uh, the location of, of those uh, four cameras. They are about 150 kilometers apart, which is the optimal uh, distance to, to overlay uh, for, for the, for the uh, to be able to observe the, the same event from more cameras. Uh, and this shape here, that's the Nalabor plane, that's the countryside as you have seen on the first slide. Uh, with respect to the uh, digital cameras, that's quite a recent thing. Uh, uh, they are based on uh, PC controlled uh, DSLR uh, cameras, common off the shelf cameras with uh, full size uh, uh, sensor uh, and I will provide the details on these below. Now there is a couple of uh, images how uh, the, the, the automated film cameras look. This thing is the camera itself. It's uh, about the size of a small fridge and uh, this one is a uh, uh, quite typical installation. It's uh, in mountains in about uh, 1300 meters. It's uh, up to two meters of snow there so that's why it's so high. Uh, and here you can see the main lens of the camera with covers open and this other, uh, th this second uh, uh, cover uh, is to protect uh, the video camera uh, and uh, uh, radio meter and sound detector. And because we are in, in Central Europe, uh, it's pretty freezy there during the winter. So part of my work on this network in Europe when we were building it was to do service work uh, in minus five degrees and the, I'm actually standing off one meter of compressed snow at, at this thing yeah, with, a, with a plastic bag on, on, the, on the monitor to protect it from falling snow. Yeah. <laughs> That's something uh, I want to uh, uh, have these issues in Australia, it's the other way. Uh, these pictures show uh, uh, the, the cameras uh, deployed in, 
in Nalabor, and this big one on the left that's that's in at Forest Airport, which is north of uh, Yukla uh, by the uh, uh, Indian Pacific Transline. And uh, this one is uh, Mandrabila Station, that, that's south of, south of uh, Forest, uh, a little bit to the west. And th this is uh, how the, the the group of people installing or, or servicing cameras look like after a week spent in Nalabor. So it's like driving on bumpy roads and, and being dirty and no, no option how to wash or take a shower. Uh, and this small image shows a little bit of insides of the camera with the uh, stainless uh, cover removed. So it's a lot of moving parts inside. And I will show later the, the block diagram of, of, the, of the camera. So here we go. Uh, it's uh, um, pretty close to industrial uh, a robot or, or that sort of device. It's controlled by industrial PC. Uh, please mind that it's designed from uh, about year about 2000 2001 so the, the oldest cameras are based on Pentium 1 PC uh, and uh, the later ones have a bit uh, more uh, powerful uh, CPUs that that's not because we would need more power uh, the functionality is basically still the same uh, but uh, because of those uh, uh, PC boards were not no longer available that's a big of issue with running these uh, long duration projects. If you expand uh, and build more uh, devices of the same kind, you, you fall into this sort of problems that, uh, that some hardware is not available. Uh, in case of industrial uh, components, it's a bit better. The, they usually stay uh, available three to five years but with uh, the, the commercial products it's even less than one year so it's a big issue uh, so yeah Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, they make, uh, if it's a, a, a big thing, they make quite a significant sonic boom in, in the atmosphere. Uh, um, probably you have heard about that Chelyabinsk uh, um, uh, fireball. Uh, the, the actual sonic boom and, and the sonic wave was that strong that it broke uh, glass in windows in half of the city and people were actually staring at what's on the sky and uh, uh, a couple of minutes later they were still staring and they got they got hit from the from the broken glass so there was a lot of in injuries at that so that that's because of this and it, this uh, pro uh, provides uh, the scientists with some additional information on top of the of the visual observation uh, so far it was not much uh, useful for, for, the, for the fireball network, but it was included in, in the design and it's, it, it's actually running in all of these uh, uh, film cameras. Uh, so there is a, uh, back to the design, uh, there is quite a lot of mechanical parts. Uh, it's taking images on films. Uh, uh, it's not like a roll of a film. Uh, but there is a, a revolving magazine with plates. Each plate uh, uh, holds one film uh, and camera needs one film uh, per one night. Uh, and uh, there is 32 positions in the magazine. So it is able to run uh, more than one month uh, with, with the magazine. Uh, there is... <laughs> It was cool. <laughs> so th then there is a film transport mechanism which opens the magazine, uh, pulls the, the plate of the magazine uh, under the main lens. Uh, then there is a rotating shutter. That's an important uh, 
component uh, which uh, allow us uh, to chop the, the luminous flight and uh, uh, thanks to that we are able to, to determine the, the velocity of, of the fireball uh, and changing of, uh, change of the velocity through the, uh, during the flight. Uh, obviously there is fisheye lens, that means that uh, it's uh, an all-sky uh, 180 degree view of, of, the, of the night sky. Uh, uh, because of that we, we are quite happy when we can install the camera in, in areas where there is no trees or buildings or that sort of stuff, because it sees basically the horizon. Uh, uh, there is lens covers that you have already seen on the image and uh, for, for the uh, desert cameras there is a sun shield there, that's the big flat thing that uh, covers the camera during the day to prevent it from uh, from heat yeah so I assume you mostly taking photos at night yeah yeah okay. only during the night yeah. okay so um, you know how much cloud cover is there during uh, tonight in that part of the uh, Our experience is that uh, cameras operate uh, about 80% of the of the time. Yeah, so that it's at least uh, partly clear sky to 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 be worth to to run the exposures, and the <coughs> camera uh, contains a couple of other sensors. So. Uh, both for the film and, and, and the digital as well, uh, the camera start exposure only if, if the sky is clear enough. And these uh, film cameras have also uh, a precipitation detector, uh, which uh, uh, activates opening the cover of the covers. I, uh, Another component is microcontroller, which uh, uh, runs all the time while the PC is running or only during the, the night, during the daytime, it's, it's powered off uh, and camera is uh, in sleep mode to, to preserve some, mem uh, some uh, not memory power and uh, also to protect the, the components from the heat. Uh, uh, there is uh, uh, this unit controls the heating, cooling, and there is also wake-up timer. Uh, we have their UPS uh, uh, unit. Uh, it does not have that much sense in case of the solar power because it's independent, but we, we run these cameras also from mains. Uh, mostly in Europe is, is run from, from mains power and there are blackouts and we do not want to, the camera to stay open uh, in case of storm coming and blackout and then rain coming to the camera. So uh, the UPS uh, provides uh, enough uh, capacity to, to safely close the camera which takes uh, less than 10 minutes. Uh, Connection to the internet is uh, through GSM in the Europe or, or uh, through, uh, through Ethernet. Uh, in, in Nabor we use uh, uh, two-way uh, satellite connection. Uh, that, that's the technology we used uh, at the beginning. Nowadays, especially along the dance line, there is pretty good Telstra coverage, so we are uh, switching to Telstra uh, 3G or next or whatever they call it, uh, which is uh, cheaper and it has much uh, better response rather than geostationary satellite connection. Uh, another important uh, sensor is radiometer, which uh, uh, is based on photomultiplier. It's pretty sensitive uh, thing. Uh, uh, that is uh, providing overall signal, uh, brightness signal of the sky. Uh, and from this uh, sensor we get a light curve that helps us to, to find the exact time of the event because the, on the film we see just an image and, and it was taken during the night sometimes and we need to know the exact time 
with uh, precision better than one second and for, for some calculations like uh, fragmentation of the rock, uh, it's good to have even, even better timing. And also it's good for matching uh, the, the observation from several cameras. The, the light curve gives pretty good uh, matching of the timing. Uh, and uh, that, that video camera uh, that I have shown on the image, uh, on, on the photo, that, that's, based, that's there for, for a cloudiness sensor. Uh, it's basically security video camera, uh, highly sensitive, and we process the, the, the video stream uh, and count stars. And if there is more than uh, defined level of a number of stars, then then we start the exposure on film. Uh, this slide shows uh, the, the software architecture. Uh, I'm here at Linux conference, so a little bit of, of the Linux software and technologies used. It's uh, a pretty old thing. The Mark I cameras uh, are based on uh, Red Hat 7.3 distribution. That was quite a popular one. The, the, the early development was even on kernel 2.2. Uh, later, uh, we upgraded it to, to this uh, version of Red Hat with, uh, with 2.4. It's slightly modified to, to, with patches for, for NTP to use the PPS precise timing. So we have uh, better than one microsecond time with, with GPS reception uh, in the system. Other uh, common technologies are NTP for time, as a secure shell for connection and for transfer of files. Uh, R-Sync and uh, the video uh, library is uh, V4, V4L, that's probably uh, quite uh, stuff you, you know pretty well. Uh, for the UP UPS in the Mark I is used uh, uh, software provided by uh, APC uh, that works quite well. Later they stopped support Linux, so we, we used another package. Uh, the, the I.O. is, uh, the digital I.O. is done directly through, uh, through memory mapping and uh, this Mark I camera used uh, uh, plain ISA uh, bus which is nowadays not available in, in, even in industrial PCs. Uh, the, the, the main software packages uh, uh, the exposure control software and the software for communication with the with the uh, microcontroller unit uh, are demons uh, executed by the system five minute scripts uh, and uh, this software is the, the largest package uh, it has many threads about 15 threads running in parallel timing e each each sensor of of those uh, uh, precipitation detector or radiometer, all these sensors have own thread and that's synchronized and uh, uh, controlling the, the whole instrument. Uh, every, uh, it creates uh, a one uh, detailed log for each night and uh, if there is some problem detected, it, it, it sends emails uh, uh, to list of email addresses. That sounds pretty obvious now, but uh, keep in mind that it's a, a system designed in, in 1999. And basically, as it was designed with little modifications, it's still running and it's 15 years. Uh, this is Mark II camera. Uh, we had to, uh, or I had to change the, the, the software because uh, some of the hardware was no longer available. Uh, there were no uh, ISA cards, so we uh, changed to PCI uh, digital I.O. cards, uh, and uh, also the video grabber was no longer available, and new video grabber was not supported by the old kernel, so I had to rewrite a lot of the software, and I have chosen the, 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 this CentOS uh, distribution based on um, which is actually the deri derivative or, or clone of, of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, 
so now we get to, to, the, to the film cameras network. Uh, this uh, upper part is showing the, the blue cold northern hemisphere network. Uh, in the middle there is a server and uh, um, scientific team processing the data. And down here is the, the desert fireball network of film cameras as it was running uh, in the past. So it's for uh, automated cameras. Uh, the films has to be collected manually using human power, but uh, logs and other information like like radiometer data curves that is is uh, uh, data that can be collected through the internet. Uh, the, the cameras uh, uh, produce, uh, I would say some 20 uh, gigabytes of, of data. It's basically radiometer records uh, a year. So once for, for a time, uh, someone has to go there with laptop and download this data and bring it uh, to the server uh, because the, the data connection is not fast enough to download all the data. Uh, in in the, the European network, uh, uh, they have one magazine for each camera, so they come regular, uh, regularly to the, all the stations and, and they change the exposed films with blank ones uh, and they do this uh, like in a month cycle for all the cameras. Uh, in uh, the Nalabor network uh, there is two magazines for each camera and uh, one is in the camera and the other one is on the way to Perth. Uh, it's sent uh, by the, the trans line, so the, the train actually stops because it picks up this box with, with the magazine. Uh, it's shipped to Perth, uh, there is developed, and the films are sent to Europe uh, to, to check scientists to, to analyze them. Uh, and if there is something, uh, something nice on, on the images, uh, they uh, let us know and uh, uh, we organize a search trip. This is how to look uh, the, uh, the image from the film camera. Uh, you can see the, the stars are not dots, uh, but, uh, uh, but trails, because the, the lens does not move. It's not like telescope which turns itself following the stars. Um, uh, and uh, this bright thing is a moon. This is pretty, pretty nice uh, bright night with a couple of stops in, in the exposure. So this looks like it was cloudy here or whatever. <clears throat> and this thing here, which goes across all the, all the arcs, is uh, actual fireball. And here is the zoomed uh, uh, image. Of, of it and you can see the chops uh, that's uh, done by the rotating shutter I have mentioned before. This is another uh, image uh, f from, f from the uh, Nalabor network. Uh, that this was actually quite important one because it was the first uh, search for, for, uh, for a meteorite in in Australia, the initial mass or, or first search for, for, the, for, for the meteorite uh, captured by the, by the network. The initial mass was estimated to 50 kilos, uh, velocity to 13 kilometers per second, and it was predicted that there will be a couple of uh, fragments uh, between 100 and, and 250 grams. Um, it was quite uh, hard to process this uh, this even because it was low by the horizon and uh, the, the, the image in, uh, or, or the data uh, is quite compressed by the horizon because of the geometry of the lens. Uh, even the, the chopping is not really well visible in this one, but eventually the, the Czech guys did a good job with this one and they uh, calculated the orbit, uh, that's the red ellipse, 
and it was quite an extra, extraordinary one. Uh, usually, uh, um, meteoroids uh, cross the Earth orbit uh, and they come from the main uh, asteroid belt, but this one was already uh, traveling inside uh, the, the Earth orbit mostly, and it was even crossing the Venus orbit. And here's the recovery. Uh, the first bit was 150 grams and the second one 174 and both of them were uh, found uh, closer than 100 meters from the predicted fall line. Uh, and it was named Bumber Arrow Coal. Uh, we, uh, meteorites are named by the closest uh, uh, geographical thing which has a name. So that's something, I know there'll be some, some collapsed uh, cave. Uh, what, what, that's the only thing you can actually see in a world of us is just a plane and nothing. Uh, and it's also quite, uh, 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 quite interesting from the geological point of view. The, 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 the geological uh, composition is quite unique. Uh, uh, not really common, it, it's not common stony, common irony meteor. So now I'm getting to the digital cameras. Uh, at, the, at the beginning the idea was to build uh, so-called triggered systems uh, that would have uh, the video capture card uh, with continuously running uh, detection of, of movement. Uh, as, as a main uh, uh, optical uh, telescope and uh, that would uh, fire that would capture the beginning of the of, of the trajectory and it would uh, end some, with some delay of uh, less than half second uh, fire a sequence of high speed uh, high resolution uh, all sky images uh, using um, uh, the, 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 the best uh, available common of the shelf uh, DSLR, uh, which is Canon 1D, that one that's used for sport photography. So it does, does not have that much megapixels, but it's pretty fast and it can take up to, I think, 11 uh, uh, full quality uh, raw images per second. So that would actually uh, be uh, our solution for the rotating shutter. Uh, it turned out that it, this uh, design is quite complicated, uh, uh, namely from the software point of view, because it was based on, on Windows and uh, UFO capture software, which is available on Windows only. And the UFO capture software is obviously not open source, so we can't modify it as we need it. Uh, so instead of triggering some simple uh, signal inside the computer, like uh, setting up a shared memory vari variable, it beeps, and when it beeps, this is digitalized by, by uh, a sound card, and that actually uh, uh, goes to, to a microcontroller, and that fires uh, the, the camera, so it's quite, you know, this sort of design, yeah, but it worked somehow. <laughs> uh, so as long as there is no uh, uh, pure Linux solution or some more elegant solution uh, of this problem, we, we had put this uh, uh, as a side, uh, um, side design and we concentrated on a long exposure uh, cameras that work uh, similarly as the, as the film cameras, just there is not one uh, exposure per, per whole night because CCDs are uh, way more uh, sensitive. Uh, the films used uh, uh, in the film cameras are black and white and they have uh, sensitivity 120 ISO uh, while uh, with, with the today's uh, DSLRs, uh, we can pretty well run at 3200 or 6400 based on uh, whether it's uh, night with moon or, or without moon. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 
so we designed uh, Mark One camera and built four of them. And these uh, these guys were running in Nalabor for about half a year. Um, uh, first one was installed, I think, in February two, 2013, uh, and we collected them in in October uh, 2013. Uh, the, the concept uh, has proven to, to be quite good. Uh, we have uh, modified the design a little bit, and uh, today we have 10, 10 Mark II cameras built, five of them deployed, uh, four replaced those Mark I, and, and one is uh, at the moment running at Nordham uh, as a part of the uh, semi outreach project. Uh, because we would like to in install these uh, cameras also in the wheat belt, basically uh, at the roof of the local schools, high schools or primary schools. And we would li like to involve uh, teachers uh, to use images from, from these cameras uh, for teaching, so they will have access to, to the data uh, by connecting through Wi-Fi or whatever. Uh, Ethernet cable with laptop, uh, and by the end of uh, 2014, we would like to have at least 25 uh, cameras in total deployed uh, uh, in in Western Australia, and eventually it should be 50 cameras in Australia. Uh, we would like to expand to South Australia as well, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully. Uh, also then in, in the desert parts of, of USA. Uh, <clears throat> and the third uh, type of camera uh, that's uh, at, at the stage of thought uh, at the moment only, uh, but uh, we, we, this, the, the software uh, is coded uh, in Linux, in C, Python, and, and quite common uh, code base. So we, we would like to provide some uh, modules of this software or, or to, to release it uh, online and uh, uh, provide the, the enthusiasts that are, uh, that are interested in this uh, uh, astronomy projects uh, with uh, uh, PCBs with microcontroller and the, the basic electronics and uh, uh, these people then, then can build their own cameras, they would buy whatever recommended DSLR and, and enclosure and uh, they would uh, share the, the data with, with the network and if uh, there is some even captured by the, by the kid camera or user camera, uh, they would be obviously invited to participate on the search trip and, and uh, they, that, that's uh, also a part of the of the outreach uh, uh, thing of, of the project. So eventually, the dream is to have, you know, quite few of cameras in 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 WA and in South Australia and in mostly in in the interior of the continent. So uh, we will see how it goes. Uh, this is. Uh, image of, of the Mark I camera uh, as it was deployed at Kananda Station. Uh, you can probably s possibly see this, like th one top third of the, of the box is, is the DSLR itself and down there there is a PCB with electronics and, and small PC controlling it. This is a battery, uh, uh, roughly the same size and capacity as, as a diesel car battery. Uh, and this flat thing is solar panel, so the idea was that it will be able to to run autonomously with uh, with uh, less than square meter solar panel and one battery. And this stand can be just put on the youth and moved anywhere we need, so it would be easy to deploy it. Uh, the Mark One camera was based on on uh, eBooks PC uh, ru running uh, Debian Linux, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, we used uh, this Vortex 
86 CPU for, for, the, for the first type. Uh, uh, I've heard that it was uh, used for so for also for some uh, in some other talk. It was it's used in the radio astronomy project as well to control something in the M MWA, I think, or the, yeah, 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 the Vortex CPU. Uh, uh, the, the advantage of this uh, uh, CPU or this PC is that it has pretty, pretty low power consumption. It's uh, about five watts, including uh, a laptop hard drive. Uh, on the other hand, it's not much powerful. Uh, uh, besides of the of the PC, there is again microcontroller, which is Leo stick. Uh, that's Arduino compatible uh, memory stick size uh, size uh, uh, microcontroller, and that uh, uh, controls the, or actually triggers the shutter uh, based on GPS time. Uh, so the DSLR cam uh, camera is uh, triggered uh, not by the PC but by the microcontroller and uh, uh, it, uh, uh, it, the, the exposure time for this uh, 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 Mark I camera was uh, 15 seconds, later we changed it to 30 seconds. Uh, um, it also powers on the DSLR, which is powered on only, only during the night time. On the other hand, the PC box and the microcontroller is running all the time, even during the day. Uh, uh, and there is uh, a lens. For, for this, uh, uh, this uh, camera, uh, we have used uh, a Nikon D800E, which is a version of, of D800. With, uh, with the anti-aliasing filter uh, not actually removed but eliminated by another added filter as we have learned eventually. <coughs> uh, and the uh, lens is uh, Nikon 10.5mm uh, fisheye for those who are interested in photography. Uh, that's pretty compact, small fish islands, uh, f slash uh, 2.8. Uh, and there is 3G modem for internet connection, but uh, we have run these, uh, these Mark I cameras uh, mostly on, uh, on the sides of film cameras, so they used uh, the uh, existing satellite connection. And to store the, the data collected, uh, there is one terabyte internal drive. System is on SD card, which is the, the card uh, slot is built in in the PC. And uh, one terabyte is not uh, too much. That would uh, be enough for about one month or a bit more. So we have added there a network storage uh, uh, with two, uh, two terabyte drives. Might yeah. have to wrap up soon, so can you just skip the, to the yeah, important yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. So, with this Mark One cameras, we had a couple of issues uh, that we have uh, uh, that led us to modify the design. Uh, the 3G modems uh, are basically consumables so they keep locking so we need to reboot all the PC by code reboot to, to keep them running continuously. Uh, the eBook CPU performance was slow so we, we upgraded to, to Atom CPU and we were some we had some concerns about the SD card reliability as the system drives so we replaced it as the SSDs that has have also um, better temperature range and um, we changed the mechanical design as well and we moved the, the external hard drive box into the camera box uh, and I've actually brought the, the Mark II camera uh, here that's this this one so after I finish up I, my talk you can come and have a look how does it look physically so that's uh, one of these. Uh, this is uh, uh, the most recent installation with, with uh, 
with a new design of stand, which is about two meters high, to be above the, the, the dust uh, blown by the wind. Uh, and, uh, and this all is uh, laser cut, uh, five millimeter thin, uh, and it, there is uh, not used any, any bolt, it's all uh, I don't know what's what's the word for that. Uh, we just use hammer to, to knock it in. And yeah, yeah, probably. Sorry for my English. Uh, actually, deployment of this uh, all this stand is about twenty minutes. Uh, this is the schematic of the Mark II camera. Possibly, I will skip it. Um, the most uh, uh, important change is that there is a video camera as well uh, uh, with fish eye lens and uh, that allows us to record the video as well. Uh, we compress this video and at the moment we are just saving it but we would like to run some even detection on it as well. Uh, the the, the uh, performance of the CPU allows us to process the, uh, the data in, in the camera uh, so we, we can uh, detect events uh, uh, not on the fly during the night when the images are captured but during the, the day, the next, next day. Uh, the software architecture, well, I don't know what's the... Where do I need to stop? When? Um, yeah, if you just can wrap it up, but show like maybe some of the, the photos and hmm. um, okay. the final results and things. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, this is typical uh, image from the Mark One camera with a nice fireball. You can see Milky Way here. Uh, this is another fireball that looks a bit strange. It's pretty green and and it uh, created some dust. Uh, Thing which happens from time to time, and this uh, image is shot with uh, higher sensitivity ISO setup than the other one. Uh, the network of uh, 60 cameras will uh, eventually cover probably one third of the Australian con continent. Uh, 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 and we would we, we expect that we should be able to to have uh, about 15 um, uh, searchable meteorites a year, so we will be able to choose the nice ones uh, or the larger ones that where is the better probability to actually find them. Uh, uh, the title of the slide is heaps of data. Well, uh, it's uh, 45 megabytes uh, image, uh, every 30 seconds, uh, uh, 800 images a night, so it's about 10 terabytes from camera a year. It's not that much as, as the radio astronomy projects before, but this is also not a billion dollar project, it's a million dollars project, and it's run by basically three uh, technical guys, and not by hundreds, uh, maybe thousands of people, uh, so it's quite a lot of data for us. Uh, about uh, 500 terabyte a year from the network. Uh, so we store them in, in camera. Each camera can run for at least half a year autonomously. Uh, we are actually interested in about 1% of the data. Uh, so we could uh, easily delete all the data that does not contain any detected fireballs but we think uh, uh, that uh, this data might be interested for some other astronomers or other scientists. Uh, so we were thinking when, where to put this data or what to do with them. We didn't want to delete them. Uh, and uh, fortunately there is the IVEC data store, so we are in cooperation with these guys and uh, we can use the IVEC data store uh, up to volume of hundreds of terabytes and possibly this number will enlarge during the time. So we would like to keep one year of full data in raw format 
and if uh, our room is uh, data storage is limited, uh, we can easily extract uh, JPEGs uh, from the uh, which are embedded in the raw files, um, and that reduces uh, the volume of the data to less than 10 percent. So the, the earlier years would be just JPEGs. Um, this is the infrastructure of the network, uh, cameras, uh, workstation uh, to f in our office, outreach web and databases, housekeeping database for running the network, uh, uh, data catalog uh, and all the uh, database or the data store uh, uh, containing all, all the high-res images uh, uh, and uh, the most uh, valuable part of, of the database is the event catalog that will be uh, the actual detected fireball events. Maybe we can put your slide set online. Uh, maybe just talk about the website and where people can get mm -hmm. Uh, maybe this one is, is quite good as well. That's about the, the thing that uh, uh, the, the, the data, uh, well, it might actually attract uh, attention of some people around. Uh, uh, the little bit of quality of the image is uh, the seeing in Outback is pretty good. Uh, uh, on the last trip, we were able to see uh, that uh, Venus uh, cast shadows on the ground. So with this seeing, uh, uh, if we stuck five minutes, we get uh, seven, maybe eighth magnitude vision. That's better than, than what human eye sees. And uh, with the geographical spread of the network, we should be able to have 100% uh, uh, coverage of the night sky, all sky and during all the year, so that, that means uh, on, the, on the Earth orbit around the Sun, so that's also uh, some sort of value. And this is an example of, uh, of uh, what uh, we have spot, spotted in the, <coughs> in the camera's data. It's uh, Nova Delphinus that was uh, uh, discovered by uh, Japanese uh, uh, astronomer, uh, amateur astronomer, and we went back with the, uh, through the images of, of, of one of our cameras, and this is the NOVA at the brightest uh, point, and this is about uh, uh, the time when that guy discovered it, and we were able to spot it as even even a little bit before, so, so that's just a proof that the, the data has some value also uh, outside of the uh, meter physics. Uh, we have a website of the group. Uh, there is news, images, and all the information about the group of the, of the people. And also, we have ordered the development of, of a smartphone app to uh, 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 that, that is free for download. And uh, people who are interested can use it to report. Uh, 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 fireballs or meters observed uh, whenever at the word, uh, and these uh, reports uh, go to, to a database and we don't think we would be able to search for meteorites using these reports, but possibly we could estimate at least uh, the orbit in the solar system. And that's basically all, so thank you.